Well, good morning. It's uh, Monday, the 12th of July. Uh, the class is progressing nicely. I'm sorry for a few of the hiccups that have come along the way. Uh, but one of the things about this class is it's pretty self-directed in regards to the responses and the case studies that you see. What I've tried to do is stack this thing in an organizational way that you start out with some basic incidents and then you move on up so some of the things have become more difficult. This is the time when you go to write, write your response. Don't be afraid to do some additional research. And some of you have done that and it's really worked out well for you. But the biggest thing is you come closer and closing to the end of this course, which is probably in the last week of July. One thing you have got to do when you write your paper, make sure you put plenty of references, cite, citations in your paper so that uh, when I go to review it, I can research your citations and your research to make sure that you're on track with what you're trying to report on. One of the big things in this class, it's pretty simple. It's not a hard class to take, but, but the, the big thing is, is you've got to look at some of the things we're up against right now. Look at the mess uh, that the uh, emergency responders are dealing with, with the, with the condo complex in Florida that collapsed in Metro Day area. You know, the resources are being poured into that to recover the victims is, 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 is immense. And think about the logistics of all this. Where do these guys go from the task, task force teams, the dog teams, law enforcement, FEMA, all those? Um, insights tell me that they put them up on a cruise ship, and that's how they respond after they're done with their shift. They go back there for uh, decompressed time, and then they come back later and go to work in 12-hour shifts. Now, the deployment's journey on a task force is, is anywhere between 7 and 14 days. This is a two-week deployment. There's no doubt about it. But after this deployment and you come back home and seeing the things that they've seen, now the real the decompression starts, and it just doesn't happen overnight. Think about yourself on a fire scene or emergency scene and uh, you walk into an incident that you have no control over, but it's just chaos and catastrophic. Think about you as the responder. How long does it take for you to decompress and get through the stressfulness of the whole situation? So keep that in the back of your mind and remember that we're all human beings. We all process things differently. And, it, and it's tough, no matter how big the incident, how small the incident, no matter what the carnage is that you're dealing with or the people you're dealing with. Politicians don't have any real friends in any matter on this matter, but you do as friends. Uh, they have support groups like through the IFF, through uh, local agencies, crisis management teams, and now behavioral health. We've got a lot of things working for us, guys, but the problem is we still have to get through the incident. CI's <clears throat> crisis intervention is really tough. And PTSD is now a very real threat to our careers and to ourselves. So look at this big picture and how you're going to be dealing with this. A lot of people are pas passionate about animals. I put the decon thing in there because uh, a lot of people just think you just do it in the field and you're done. No, it's, there's more to it. You've got to do some research. What animal rescue team can come in and help you with that? It's important. These are all important facts. So please look at it as a, as a global research in regards to how these incidents are managed. Thank you.